I'd like to show you guys what I believe to be slime mold. My girlfriend was holding our cat earlier and she noticed that a little slug looking thing came off of the cat and went on her arm. It wasn't a slug, it was definitely not a slug, but but it, it looked like it looked like this to be honest. It looked like that stuff, except a little not as much of it, you know? All right, so before I show you the video, I'd like to read a bit from Rents.com. This is by Jan Smith. It's called Dictyostelium Found in Morgellons Sufferers. And it was out, I believe, on March 9th, 2010, if not September 3rd, 2010. Um, and it starts with, the reason that Dictyostelium discoidium is important is because this cellular slime mold has unique properties that lend itself to mutating other substances. These eukaryotic microorganisms have a simplistic genetic makeup and produces what are known as chemotaxis. Dictyostelium is utilized in many labs to specifically mutate other material. Dictyostelium has an amoeba form along with many other stages of varied shapes and configurations as the individual cells emerge into groupings that look like larger single entities. Quote, Dictyostelium amoeba grow as separate, independent cells but inter interact to form multicellular structures when challenged by adverse conditions such as starvation. Because when I put it under the microscope, it actually started to lay parts of itself around. I thought I thought it was laying eggs, but it seemed to then suddenly, uh, it appeared then that, that it was completely f composed of these eggs. And so it's not eggs. I don't know uh, what it is. I'm not an expert on this stuff. I'm I, I don't consider myself a biologist or a scientist. I, I just am I'm really interested in it. And I might be pronouncing some words wrong, but whatever. Um, so I'll, I'll continue here. Dictio... No, uh, many of the underlying molecular and cellular processes ha appear to have arisen in primitive precursor cells and to have remained fundamentally unchanged throughout evolution. Basic processes of development such as differential cell sorting, pattern formation, stimulus-induced gene expression, and cell type regulation are common to dictyostelium. It is used in gene research as well as other uses and then in brackets it says dictybase.org and of course I'm going to include this article in the description of the video. Even if you have never before heard of dictyostelium, discoidium, or that's what it's called, dictyostelium discoidium, uh, you may be quite impressed to go to this huge website that is a well-funded and part of the Human Genome Project and NIH. This cellular slime mold is a major player in many aspects of medicine and cell research. It is a good bit of information to have for future reference. I encourage everyone to take a look at photos and videos of this substance at http colon slash slash dictybase.org. The many configurations of dictyostelium. And it goes on to say, each shape is comprised of hundreds to thousands of single motile amoeba cells acting in unison to form each of these configurations. These bacteria eating amoeba may be linked to the presence of two novel types of bacteria recently found in the blood of Morgellons victims by Clifford Carnicom. And I'm just going to pause again. I have more gallons. My girlfriend has more gallons. It's not a delusion. I'm, I'm tired all the time. I'm cold. I, I have no energy. I have memory loss. I'm speaking now, but, but every now and then I have a hard time remembering a, a word that I want to remember. And, and I, that, that doesn't sound like much, but it's, it's happening more and more and more often. It goes on to say, take a, a good look at the photos below. There is a definite presence of dictyostelium in the tissue from Morgellons victims. The human body could not normally provide the necessary bacteria needed to feed dictyostelium. Is there a larger plan in the works to maintain a balance of chemistry with various pathogenic ingredients which are now being forced upon us with chemtrail chemicals and tainted food? Is there a long-term plan in progress to implant humans with devices to control or harm us? Could it already be too late? And then there's a, a diagram. 
but I, I'll, I'll leave that for the link, you can look at that. And then it goes on to say, Dictyostelium discoidium life cycle, C-AMP receptor 1, in brackets C-A-R-1, of Dictyostelium couples to the G-protein G2 to mediate activation of adenylyl and guanylyl, or guanylyl, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, cyclases, so that's guanylyl cyclases, chemotaxis, and cell aggregation. I believe that Dictyostelium is just the base of Morgellons disease. It is unknown what all of the other pathogens mutated in it are, but I have found many examples of specimens that appear to be from the Umycota family. That is just for starters. By the way, the Umycota I have identified is a new component of nanotechnology with its beta-1,3 glucan components. It makes strong helical structures to support nanotechnology. For more details, read http colon slash slash www.morgellonsexposed.com slash throwback.htm. Spiral geometry of a signal transmitter CAMP in an amoeba population Dictyostelium discoidium leads to a chemotactic movement or leads to chemotactic movements of cells in direction of the spiral core. It is a wave motion. And I'm just going to point this out here. This is sort of what, what I was looking at right here. Um, that one that almost looks like a brain. And then below it, I'll zoom out here, hold on. It's hard to control this camera. Now, if you scroll down, this doesn't really look like what I saw, but, but you know what? If you scroll down more, and, and I'll read what it says there in a second, but uh, if you scroll down more and more, and even more, and even more, then you come to this. This is exactly what, what, what I was looking at, I think. And you'll be the judge, you'll see the video for yourself. Um, but there it says faceted crystals in black matrix from body of Morgellons victim remains of nano worm or nano horn in center from Texas Medical Center News volume 21 number 18 October 1st 1999 genome studies of slug might be applicable to humans Quote, Dictostelium consists of only six chromosomes and approximately 8,000 genes. The DNA in those genes comprises 34 million pairs of chemicals called bases that contain instructions for the role each gene plays. End quote. Quote, by knocking out or deleting a gene and observing the effects of the mutation on Dictostelium's development, Dr. Kruspa can determine the gene's function. It takes only a month to generate a mutation in Dictyostelium, but in a more complicated genome, such as that of a mouse, the process can require six months to a year. We have developed methods that enable one laboratory researcher to mutate 100 Dictyostelium genes within a month, Dr. Kuspa says." End quote. It goes on to say, frequencies that are frequencies what are they and who is receiving them? Going back a couple of years to the nano devices that were identified on my body, there was a common thread in these, in, in the, I guess that's a typo, in the these of devices I was able to identify. They were found under the heading of communications devices. Full detail, see http colon slash slash morgellonsexposed.com slash living with a nightmare dot htm. And then there's oscill oscilloscope photos taken from two Morgellon sufferers. I'll leave, th leave that for you guys. I don't know anything about that. These oscilloscope photos are from two different Morgellon sufferers. To obtain the results shown, the leads from the machine were held in each hand by the test subject. Several oscilloscopes were used to to ensure inform to ensure uniform results. 
The signals appear to be in the satellite range according to the electronics expert who did the testing. In previous years, I found nano communications devices that were identified as communication devices. Alright, so now I'm going to show you the website that was recommended in the actual rents.com article. Dictibase.org is that, is that website, and it'll show the chemo taxis, which I believe is, is what I was looking at. Here's the chemo taxis. And it was moving like this. At one point it would look like this and then it would stretch like this. And the one I was looking at looked a lot like this, only you couldn't see the core of it as well. You could sort of just more see the edges. I guess I'm having technical difficulties with my lighting. All right, so with all that in mind, I'm gonna show you what I believe to be what I just described. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm not sitting here saying this is definitely it, but you know, you be the judge. It looks a lot like that picture I showed at the bottom of the article. And, um, and it is slimy and it is uh, composed of, of smaller parts that are, you know, coming together to act as a single organism. That's, that's what I gathered from looking at this. So here it is. February 16th, 2012. I just picked this off my cat. No idea what it is. It's just a moving white blob. Yeah, if you look at this end, there's a hair sticking out of them in the end. So that looks like to me. Right now it's just zoomed 50 times.
Unfortunately, right at this point in the video, right when the money shot was gonna happen, right when you were gonna see it actually lay parts of itself onto the baggie, I ran out of space on my two gigabyte SD card. If you want to prevent something like that from happening in the future, please go to potentnews.wordpress.com and click the donate button. I'm now going to resume the video where I left off after I transferred the files.